Welcome to this YSL Report Builder tutorial. In this short video, we'll explain how to use the if and switch functions. So the video is all about creating conditional expressions. We'll begin with a quick look at basic if functions and then move on and look at nested if functions as well. When you get a large number of conditions to test for, nested ifs become a bit difficult to work with. So we'll move on and look at how to use the switch function for testing multiple conditions. In the last part of the video, we'll look at how you can apply grouping to tables using the results of conditional expressions. So it's not a particularly long video, but there's a couple of interesting ideas in here. Let's get started. I've started by creating a new blank report in Report Builder, and the next thing I'm going to do is create a data source which connects to the movie's database. Just a quick reminder that if you don't already have a copy of the movie's database, you can use the link in the description of this video to download a script and then follow the video to get it installed. Assuming you've done that already, you can right click on your data sources folder in the report data window and choose to add a data source. I'll call my data source movies and then make sure I use a connection embedded in this report. I'll hit the build button to build up my connection string so I can type in my server name dot sql uh, sorry dot backslash sql 2017 and then I can select my database name from the drop down list at the bottom. I can then click OK a couple of times and having done that I can create a data set which uses that data source just to get the basic list of fields I'll need for this video. So let's right click on the movie's data source and choose to add a data set. I'll call the data set films and then I'll use the query designer just to select the fields quickly and easily. From the tables folder, I'll expand the film table and I'm going to include the title column followed by the runtime minutes, budget and box office, Oscar nominations and Oscar wins. At that point, I'll click OK a couple of times and there's my basic data source and data set created. Next, I'll add a basic table which displays the first few columns we're interested in. So let's start by tidying up the contents of the report. I'll remove the placeholder title text box. Then I'll also remove the page footer by right clicking and choosing remove page footer. I'll then add a basic table into the report by right clicking and choosing insert table. And then I'm going to add in the title column followed by the budget dollars and the box office dollars just to start with. I'll change the column width for the title column and then just position the table in the top left hand corner of the page. Then I'll quickly run the report just to check what happens. Do I see all the results I expect? No, I don't. The silly little text display bug has affected me again. If I head back to the design view, a quick way to solve that if you haven't seen this before is to highlight all the text or all the cells in the table and then change the font to a different font name and then simply change it back to the original. And that should solve that problem. And all the values then get displayed. What I'm going to do next then is create a calculated field, which tells me whether a film is profitable or not. So I'm going to test if the box office dollars value is greater than the budget value. And if so, that means the film made a profit. And I'd like to display the word profit in a new column in the table. If that's not the case, so if the box office is not greater than the budget, then it will display the words not profit or no profit, something like that. So to do that, let's head back to the design view. We can add a calculated field to a data set by right clicking on its name and choosing add calculated field. We can then give the new field a name. Let's call this one something like profit description. We can then click the FX button to launch the expression builder, which gives us a bit of help when we build up our calculation rather than having to write the entire thing from scratch. I'd like to use a function which allows me to test if a condition has been met and produce one answer if it has been met and a different answer if it hasn't. You may well have encountered this function in other Microsoft products. It's called if. There's a slight different spelling in Report Builder compared to things like, for example, Excel. So if you're not sure how to spell the function name, you can look in the common functions category in the bottom left hand corner. If I expand that and then look for the program flow category, I'll find the if function listed in there, spelt with two I's, I-I-F. If I simply double click on its name, I can see that the name is inserted for me, so I don't risk mistyping it. And it also opens a set of round brackets or parentheses to enclose the function arguments. When you've selected the function in this list, you'll see a little preview of how it works or an example of how it works. So it shows me if I can make this screen wide enough. If I zoom in, you can see, hopefully, 
that the if function has three separate parts. It has a logical test, followed by a comma, then the answer if that logical test returns true, followed by another comma, and the answer if the logical test returns false. So if I zoom back out again, let's write our logical test. I want to check if the value of the box office dollars column is greater than that of the budget dollars column. To do that, I can head to the fields category and then double click box office dollars first. Then I need to insert the correct operator to test for greater than. Again, if you're not sure which operators you have available, you can expand the operators category in the expression builder in the bottom left hand corner and then look in the comparison category here. You can click on each item in this list and see its description on the right. So as I scroll through, you'll see that I get to the greater than operator. I can then either type this in off the keyboard or I can just double click to insert it into the expression. Back to my fields list and then I can go to my budget dollars column and double click to insert that. And then to move on to the next part of the calculation or to the next, uh, next argument, I need to type in a comma. If I want to write in a literal piece of text, so in this case I want to write in the word profit, I have to enclose that word in double quotes. So I need to open up some double quotes, type in the word profit, then close the double quotes. Then I can type in a comma to move on to the third and final parameter of if, open up some more double quotes, type in the next phrase, which will be next, uh, sorry, no profit, close the double quotes, and finally I have to close the set of round brackets or parentheses to enclose the complete argument list. If I then zoom out and then click OK to complete that calculation, I can click OK one more time, and that's the profit description calculation created. Let's just add that to the table and then run the report to check that we see the right results. So we should be able to see that films which have a greater box office than budget have the word profit and films which have a lower box office than profit, sorry, box office than budget have the words no profit. So that calculation is working properly. For the next example, I'd like to include the Oscar nominations and Oscar wins field in my table. So I'm going to drag those in and attach those to the right hand side. What I would then like to be able to do is create a calculation which tells me whether a film was a winner or a loser or simply wasn't nominated for any Oscars. So if the Oscar nominations field is zero, then it was not nominated. If the Oscar nominations field was greater than zero, but the Oscar wins field was zero, then it must be a loser, as in it was nominated for but did not win anything. And then if the Oscar wins value is greater than zero, then it must be a winner. So there's a combination of different criteria or conditions, uh, in this case, three different possibilities. Now, although we can't write that using a single if function, we can nest if functions to test multiple possibilities. So let's have a look at how we can do that back into the design view and then let's create a new calculated column to create this correct result. We can right click on the film's data set again and choose add calculated field. Let's call this one Oscar description. We can then click the FX button to launch the expression builder, head to the common functions category, choose program flow and then double click if. Now we have to start somewhere. I'm going to start by checking if the film uh, the Oscar nominations was equal to zero. That tells me that the film wasn't even nominated for any Oscars. So I can head to the fields category and then double click Oscar nominations. If I wanted to, if I wasn't sure, I could check my operators category, go to comparison and find that it's equals to check if something is equal to. So I can say equals zero, followed by a comma, and then in some double quotes, write in my description, which will be not nominated. I can then close the double quotes and then type in a comma to move on to the third parameter. Now I've got a bit of a problem because there are still two further possibilities. I can't just write a single answer here. So what I'm going to do is add another if function to test for the next condition. So I can either type that in myself or I can go back to the program flow category, double click the if function again, which will type its, uh, type its name in and open a new set of parentheses. Now I would like to check if the Oscar wins value equals zero. So if I reach this stage in the sequence of tests, then it must mean that the Oscar nominations is greater than zero, or at least not zero. So I can then check if the Oscar wins is zero. Head back to the fields list, 
double click Oscar wins, and then again, check if that is equal to zero. If I type in a comma, I know that that film is, must be a loser. So it must have received at least one nomination, but did not win anything. So in some double quotes, I can write in the word loser. I'll then close the double quotes. And then there's only one final possibility. The, feel, the film must have been nominated for at least one Oscar and it must have won at least one Oscar. So that means that the film must be our winner. I can close the double quotes after the word winner. And then I'll close one set of round brackets or parentheses for this if function. And then I'll need another set of round brackets closed for the original if function that we created. Having done that, we can click OK. Click OK again, and then add that Oscar description field to the table. Let's give the report a quick run and we'll hopefully see the correct description next to each film. So Jurassic Park was a winner. Spider-Man was a loser because it was nominated for two Oscars but didn't win any. Likewise, Superman Returns was nominated for one but didn't win any. And things like Evan Almighty and Harry Potter's Run of the Order of the Phoenix didn't get nominated for anything, so they show not nominated. OK, so that's all working quite well. Nested if functions work reasonably well, but they are a little awkward to create, particularly when you go beyond two or three conditions. There's a much better solution when you have many conditions to test for. So to demonstrate this, let's add in the runtime minutes field into the table. And if I quickly run the report, what I'd like to do is create a description which breaks our films into different categories based on their length. So if the runtime is less than 100 minutes, then I want it to be described as a short film. If it's between 100 and 150, the film will be of medium length. Between 150 and 200, it will be long. And then longer than that will be an even longer description and so on and so on and so on. So we could create as many descriptions as we like for this. Let's head back to the design view and then let's add in a new calculated field using the add calculated field option. I'll call this one length description. And then we can click the FX button at the right hand side to launch the expression builder. Rather than using the if function, this time I'm going to use a function called switch. If I look in the common functions category and again head back to program flow, I'll find the switch function listed just below if. It's a little tricky to work out from the example how switch works, but if I can change the size of the di dialog box so it's a little more readable, the idea with switch is that you put your parameters or your arguments in pairs. So you have a logical test followed by the answer if that test returns true, then another logical test and the answer if that one returns true, so on and so on and so on until you run out of conditions to test, to test for. So to see how that works for our example, let's insert the switch function. And then our first condition will ask if the film's runtime in minutes is less than 100. I'll head to my fields list and then double click the runtime minutes field. I'll type in less than and then type in 100, followed by a comma. And then my description for films matching that condition will simply be short. So in some double quotes, I'll write in the word short. Now that's a perfectly legitimate switch function. If I close the parentheses at that point, I'd receive the word short next to any film which is less than 100 minutes in length and everything else would just show a blank cell. Let's take away the closed round bracket and type in a comma instead, because now I can just write in another pair of arguments that test the next condition and provide the answer if it's met. Rather than type it all out again, let's just copy and paste everything from fields all the way to the, um, the description so, and the comma at the end. So I'll copy that with Control and C and then Control and V to paste it in at the end. Now I can just test or change the uh, condition I'm testing for. So I can change the uh, runtime minutes value to less than 150 and then change the word short to the word medium instead. So let's change that to the word medium. I can then paste in again, just after the next comma, I can paste in the same pair of arguments. I'll change my condition to check for less than 200 and then change the description from short to long. For the final test, I have a couple of options. I could explicitly test whether the runtime is greater than or equal to 200. So if I inserted the runtime minutes field again, I could check for greater than or equal to 200 followed by a comma, and if that's the case, I can give it a description, really long, stupidly long, epic, something along those lines. 
And if I then close the round brackets or parentheses, that's the complete switch function. With the final parameter, it's not always necessary to test an explicit condition here. The switch function works by reading your conditions in the order you write them, so I can only possibly reach this final condition if all of the previous ones have failed. So if all the previous ones have failed, essentially this one must be true. So rather than explicitly testing whether that condition returns true, if we know that it will return true, we can shortcut this by placing the value true for the fourth uh, of the final uh, logical test. It makes the the query or the expression look a little bit neater and it avoids having to explicitly test for a condition which will be met anyway. Let's click OK and then click OK again. We can then add the length description field to the table and then have a quick look at running the report and have a quick check to make sure that we get the correct description next to each film. So that looks pretty good. Now that we've created these extra categories for our films, we don't just need to display the values next to each individual detail row. We can also use these categories to perform grouping. So let's just move this first table down a little bit and let's add in a new table at the top of the screen, at the top of the report. And I'm going to add in, let's say, the, the, the length description field to start with. Now at the moment I'd see a separate row for every single individual film. What I'd like to do is group on the length description. So I'm going to right click on the details one item in the row groups panel. I'm going to go to the group properties and I'm going to add a group that will group on the, uh, the length description field. If I then click OK, I can add in some other fields into the, uh, into the table. Let's add in the title and then I can perform a count of title. So let's click on the title keyword and choose uh, right, right click and then choose summarize by followed by count. I could add in, let's say the total Oscars. So I can click on this drop down list there and choose Oscar wins. And then if I run the report, I'll see a basic table. Uh, I would do at least if I hadn't encountered this silly text display bug again. Let's just quickly switch back there and highlight all the cells in the table. I'll get that done eventually and then head to the uh, font name drop down list and just change the font back and forth. Well, when we finally get back, we now get a different group for each individual length description. I can break that down into other groups as well if I head back to the design view. If I click into the, um, the table at the top of the screen, I could add a parent group by right clicking the group in the groups panel choose add group, parent group, and I can choose to group these current details by, let's say, profit description, let's say. I'll click OK at that point, and then if I run the report again, I should now see that I get a no profit category with um, different lengths and a profit category with different lengths as well. So all of these uh, sort of categorized columns we're creating can be used for grouping and aggregating in your reports as well. OK, so those are some basic ideas for creating conditional expressions in your calculated fields. Hopefully you found that one useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.